Good morning. Good morning. morning. (laughs) And welcome to the first parish in Framingham. We are a Unitarian Universalist congregation, and we are a welcoming congregation, which means no matter whom you love, how you move around in the world, your race, your age, your gender identity, your beliefs, no matter where you are in life or in your own spiritual journey, you, yes, all of you are very welcome here. I'm Terry Dixon, and I use uh, he, him, his pronouns, and I am delighted to be serving as your ministerial intern, and I'll be the worship associate for this morning. I would uh, encourage you to read the announcements in your order of service, and I would also please ask you to uh, check that you put your phones and any other uh, devices that might make noise to their quietest setting into worship mode. But while electronic beeps and buzzes can be distracting, we do welcome your human noises, your cooing, your laughter, and your singing. So yes, let's have some joyous noise. And after the service, please do join us for coffee and conversation in in Scott Hall across the courtyard. And if this is your first time joining us, we want to extend a special welcome to you. It takes a lot of courage to check out a new religious community. Trust me, I know. (laughs) And thank you for being here today and for expanding our circle. And we look forward to getting to know you better. And if this is your religious community that you call your own, welcome home. So welcome, whether you're joining us via Zoom or here in the meeting house, welcome. Now, I invite you to release and let go of anything that you may need to in order to be more fully present to yourselves, to one another, and perhaps to the sacred in this time and place. Come, let us worship together. And I invite uh, Casey to please come up and light our chalice. We light this chalice, this beautiful flaming symbol of our faith and our ingathering in community with these words by the Reverend Napoleon Lovely. We light this chalice to affirm that new light is ever waiting to break through to enlighten our ways, that new truth is ever waiting to break through to illumine our minds, and that new love is ever waiting to break through to warm our hearts. May we be open to this light and to the rich possibilities that it brings us. And thank you, Casey. Now, if you would please rise in body or spirit to sing our opening hymn, which is one of my personal favorites, number 20, Be Thou My Vision, and the words and music are in the gray hymnal.
And if you would please remain standing as we sing and say our words of affirmation. And as we do, I would invite you to face into the center of the meeting house so that you can see each other and acknowledge every person as part of this blessed community. of this church, the quest of truth is its sacrament, and service is its prayer. To dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge in freedom, to serve all life with compassion. To that end, all souls shall grow into harmony with the divine. This is our great covenant, one with another and with our God. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Lauren Strauss. I'm the Director of Religious Exploration here at First Parish. I use she, her pronouns. And I'd love to say with you all, although I'm holding lots of things, so it's going to be tough. Oh, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome, welcome to church. church. All right. So we heard in RE that it was going to be a week to get to know Rev our new inter ministerial intern, Terry. Yeah. And so we wanted to ask some questions. And so we brainstormed last week. And these are the four questions we came up with. Ready? Uh, ready as I'm going to be. All right. <laughs> question number one is a two part question. Okay. Do you have any pets? Uh, not currently, no. Um, I had dogs all, all my life growing up, but we always had dogs. And uh, I had until very recently had dogs, but not currently. No. Do you like animals? Oh, I love animals. Yes, of course. Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. No. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I had, a, I had a, I mean, I, the first dog I can remember was Domino. He was our first dog. And uh, he was a Dalmatian. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hence Domino. And I remember it's one of my first memories when I was about, I think, I must have been about three, and I was scrambling around on the floor, and his dog ball was there. And he was the same age as I was. Uh, my parents got us at the same time. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> however that worked out. And, uh, and I was crawling around on the floor, and um, I thought it would be interesting to see what it would be like to try his food. Uh, and he is such a sweet dog. I mean, it was like, Puppy, no, no, you're not doing this, right? <laughs> uh, and he, he very gently, very gently put his teeth just on me. I still have a little bit of a scar here <laughs> from it. Uh, but he was such a kind dog, he was basically saying, no, no, that's my bowl. You have your own food. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. 
We would also like to know, and this is pertinent to a few of us, whether you have any allergies. No, not really. I don't think so. Um, I'm allergic to meanness. Oh. That is something I'm allergic to, but otherwise, no, I don't have any allergies. We would love to know what your favorite color is. Oh, that's easy. It's green. Yeah. <laughs> Team green. Excellent. Do you like to build things? Yes, I do, actually. I really like building things. What uh, kinds of things do you build? I see. Well, I built a wall once. Uh, I mean, I built actually a couple of walls. I built, I built a wall in our garden, uh, yeah, brick wall. Uh, that was, didn't stand up too long. It fell down after a couple okay. of seasons. But, so I'm not sure how good I am as a bricklayer, <laughs> but I did build a wall. Uh, I did also build a wall for church, too. We, uh, my, church, I'm, my home church is in uh, Pennsylvania, Mainline Unitarian Church in Devon, Pennsylvania. And obviously, like, like we all do, we had a flower communion, except we decided instead of having just a vase, we would have a wall. And so I got this frame and put sort of ivy on it, and it was sort of like a screen, so that when people came in, they could put their flower into this ivy-covered screen, and then, of course, take one away afterwards. So yeah, I built that. So that, that stayed up longer than the, the garden wall. I'm, yeah. I'm yeah. No. Glad, to hear, <laughs> glad to hear something lasted. That's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, we like to build. What do we like to build with in RE? What do we like to build with in RE? Emmy, what do you like to build with? Go ahead. We build oh, with blocks. blocks yeah. with lots yeah. of blocks and Legos sometimes too, right? Sometimes we make random things, and sometimes we learn about things we haven't known. Well, will you let me come over and build some things with your blocks? Sure. Oh, great. Awesome. Okay. Not today, Perfect. though. Thank you. Because Terry has to do the rest of the service, so another day he'll come play Later with on. Us. Later on. Yep. Awesome. Okay. If, if um, all of you would help sing our children and teachers and me to church school, we would really appreciate it. Thank you very much, Thank Terry. You. Thank you. One of the reasons that we gather as religious community is to share the things which weigh deepest on our hearts, our milestones, our happy and sad events. We share these because we know that a joy shared can feel as though joy is being expanded. When someone is joyful, we are all joyful. And when someone carries sorrow on their hearts, we share that sorrow and ease that burden. As we share these, we intersperse them with the singing of Comfort Me so that our prayers and our sorrows and our joys are held by song so that you also might have a song in your back pocket to sing when you need it the most. We begin with the sorrows and concerns of our congregation. Greg Wells shares, my daughter found out that she needs radiation following surgery to remove her cancer. We light a candle for all those living in the devastation of Hurricane Helene. And Lizzie Wiseman shares this sorrow. Tomorrow would have been my Nana's 82nd birthday. This is the second without her. Let us now sing Comfort Me. Comfort me, comfort me, comfort me, oh my soul. Comfort me, comfort me, comfort me, oh soul. And these
these are the joys of our congregation. Tom Greeley shares this joy on October 3rd. I will celebrate a new milestone, 65 years on this earth. But more importantly, 65 years of attending First Parish. <laughs> Not to be outdone, he writes, as I was bragging to Dean Arvidson, he told me that on October 5th, he will celebrate 66 years on this planet. <laughs> And 66 years of attending First Parish, or since his first time. Once again, he has not only one-upped me as an amazing musician, but also as one of the longer, longer attending members of this church. Happy birthday, guys. Ellen Cormier shares this joy that Charlie has received some very good news from Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. The Doucettes write that they are spending time with family this morning, and so they are not here at church. And Kathy Mello shares this joy. I am so thankful. I think a lot of us are thankful for the wonderful breakfast this morning and all that contributed to making it possible. So let us now sing, sing with me. Sing with me. Sing. Sing with me, O oh my soul. Sing with me. Sing with me. Sing with me, O oh my soul. And finally, we light a silent candle for all of the joys and all of the sorrows that remain too tender to share but are deeply held and felt by this gathered community. Let's sing the final verse, Speak for Me. Speak for me, speak for me, speak for me, my soul. Speak for me, speak for me, speak for me, oh my soul. And now, I invite you into a time of contemplation, prayer, meditation. Please settle into your seat, feeling yourself supported by the earth beneath you, and take a deep breath, and another, and sink down into your body as you center yourself in quiet reflection. We call upon the spirit of life and love, upon all things we call holy or sacred, and that which sustains each of us and enables us to love and be loved, just as we are in our essential humanity. We give thanks for all the joys and blessings in our lives and all the beings and things, human and non-human, tangible and intangible, that give our lives purpose and meaning. We are also grateful for the love, compassion and kindnesses, large and small, that we receive from so many people on a daily basis whether we realize it at the time or not. And we also lift up those afflictions, sadnesses and heavy feelings, the difficulties, griefs and worries that weigh on our hearts and minds. May all who suffer find support and solace and by sharing our troubles in loving community may those troubles be lessened. May all afflicted by disease, illness, or pain, and those struggling with addictions, be comforted and find relief. May all who are experiencing grief or loss 
feel nurtured and consoled. And we lift up especially those who suffer from the epidemic of loneliness in our communities. We remember all those who have suffered and continue to suffer in this country and around the world. We are thinking of those who lost loved ones, were displaced, lost power, or otherwise had their lives impacted by Hurricane Helene this week. May they find some measure of hope and grace amidst the devastation. And we also remember those people who lost their lives or their homes in the terrible floods in Nepal this weekend. May these twin tragedies remind us again that the existential crisis of climate change impacts everyone. And may we redouble our efforts to do our part to combat it. We also lift up all the people in the Middle East, whether in Israel, Gaza, the West Bank, Lebanon, or elsewhere. We pray that further escalation of hatred and conflict is avoided. May all involved recognize and appreciate the humanity of the other. May the immense suffering end, and may there be true, just, and lasting peace in the region. We also recognize that each and every one of us misses the mark from time to time. We all can and do hurt one another, create distance between us, and cause suffering by what we do and say, or don't do and don't say, and by how we exclude or diminish others, even if not intentionally. May we each find the strength to forgive ourselves and others for our very human failings. And may we also recommit ourselves to living in loving kindness and humility with each other and pursuing greater justice for all. And now, I invite you to join in a minute of silence for personal reflection or prayer. May all which is holy and sacred hold these prayers and contemplations, all our sadnesses and regrets, all our joys and hopes, with tenderness and compassion, and help us see how to love and live better into communities of genuine respect, love, and justice. Amen, and blessed be. The words to introduce our offering were written by uh, Brandock Brandy Lovely. We heard his brother Napoleon earlier. Let there be an offering to sustain and strengthen this place, this place which is sacred to so many of us, a community of memory and of hope for which we are now the keepers of the dream. The morning's offering will now be joyfully given and gratefully received.
That was wonderful choir, thank yeah. you. <laughs> Stunning. Yeah. We both said wow from the chancel. I, I don't know if others can hear that. So today we are doing something a little different for our sermon. We are having a conversation and interview with our new ministerial intern, Terry Dixon. Um, I was walking my dog this morning and I was trying to remember who came up with the phrase, who first said the phrase, uh, the most important thing we can do is introduce ourselves to one another. And uh, the Oracle of Google was uncertain as to who <laughs> came up with that, but we thought it would be good to introduce Terry to you. Um, and we are doing this based on a new podcast that you can listen to wherever you get your podcasts um, <laughs> by Rachel Martin called Wild Card. It's an NPR podcast. Um, on that show, Rachel rips up the typical interview script and invites guests to play a game about life's biggest questions. Rachel takes actors, artists, and thinkers on a choose-your-own-adventure conversation that lets them open up about their fears, their joys, and how they've built meaning from experience, all with the help of a special deck of cards. Uh, you cannot buy that deck of cards, but you can view all of the transcripts of that and then take all of the questions from that. So that is what we have done. Now, Terry has seen the entire uh, corpus of the interview questions, but you don't know which ones I have selected. Nope. So he knows the general genre and direction. Um, so just a quick introduction to who Terry is. Uh, Terry will be joining us for the next two years. Uh, he'll be dividing his time between the First Parish here and UU Wellesley Hills. Um, uh, let's see, like the questioner in Luke 10, verses 25 through 37, he is a recovering lawyer. <laughs> These are his words, so <laughs> I am not putting them in his mouth. Uh, after 30 years of practicing intellectual property law, Terry has turned in a different, more spiritual direction. Terry grew up in Dublin, and while Ireland is still home, uh, he's also lived for many years in New York City and the Philadelphia area. He has two adult daughters, India and Lizzie, whom he is immensely proud of. He writes that he is seeking to be ordained as a UU minister and has a special interest in contemplative end-of-life chaplaincy. He is a graduate of Trinity College in Dublin with a master's in history and Columbia Law School. Recently, he returned to Trinity to study for a master's degree in contextual theology and interfaith relations and he is currently an MDiv candidate at Harvard Divinity School. He's completed a unit of clinical pastoral education, chaplaincy training at the hospital of the University of Pennsylvania, and very soon he'll be starting his second unit of clinical pastoral education at Hebrew Senior Life in Roslindale. He also loves history, as you can tell from the history degrees, travel, and cooking. So welcome, Terry. Thank you. It's great to be here. So here is how we play this okay. game. And there is a prize at the end. So, so we have uh, some cards, some very special cards. And we have three rounds. And I'm going to drop these cards. I just, I just know it. Um, the, car the rounds are memories, insights, and beliefs. Now, at any time, Terry, you can say skip, and then we'll choose one of the other mm -hmm. two cards. Yep. Or you can flip, which means I have to answer the question first, <laughs> and then you answer mm -hmm. the question. Okay. So. Can I phone a friend? Um, <laughs> that is not this game. <laughs> so. Uh, so are you ready to play? And I have an alarm set for 10.50, so that's how long we'll go, maybe a little bit longer. All right. So these are the memory cards. One, two, or three? Two. All right, man. I can peek at the questions. <laughs> Thank you. So memories. Okay. When is the first time, Terry, you remember being proud of yourself? 
It was in elementary school. Okay. Um, and I was uh, on the soccer team, and it was one of those typical, you know, kids' soccer teams where everyone just runs, runs around and, in a mob and chases the ball. But I was the goalie, so mm. I was the only one who was not in part of this mob yeah. running around. And the mob sort of came towards me. Uh, I was standing in the goal, like, you know, ready to try to save the ball. And it sort of came, and then the ball was in the middle of this mob, and I pounced. Mm. into the mob yeah. and grabbed the ball and held onto it. And people started to cheer. I don't know why, because I grabbed the ball, but, yeah. but there was this idea I could just dive into the middle of this swirling mass of people and grab the football. Mm. And I was like, yes. So that was, I must have been about five, I think. You that saved the, the day. That was the yeah. feeling of, yeah, I've really done something. Here. Right. Did, did your team win at the um, end? I don't remember. We did, okay. get, we, we, did get, we did get like slices of orange afterwards. Well, that was the, that's a great purpose. That was the main, that was the main play, yeah. purpose of playing. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Great. Yeah. All right. Well, you won that round. Um, <laughs> now. Oh, I have an assist. Ah. Thank you so oh, much, Kathy. You. Perfect. All right. It makes me think we're doing something like, I mean, this is, you know, getting to know you. It's sort of like with. It's the law, uh, the king and I, or something. Right? Yes. Getting to yes. know you. Getting to know about you. All right. So we have three more cards mm -hmm. for the memories round. Okay. One, two, or three. You pick two last time. I did. Right? Uh, I'll go with one this time. All right. One. This. This is a good one. <laughs> They're all good ones, but this is good. What was your form of rebelling? as a teenager? <laughs> um, hmm. Well, first of all, I don't think I was that rebellious. I really wasn't. Okay. I, I but your of, form of my rebellion. My form of it, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, other than the drugs and sex and rock and roll. But, well, yeah, yeah. yeah, aside from that. All of, apart from that, yeah. no, I did. Actually, rock and roll was a thing. I was a huge David Bowie fan. Oh, massive sure. Massive David yeah. Bowie fan. And I remember on the last day of high school, when yep. I was a senior, yeah. I dressed in this entire Ziggy Stardust thing. I mean, it was wow. just, we had a school okay. uniform, I wasn't aware, but I, I dressed as Ziggy Stardust. I, face paint and everything? Oh yeah, oh, gold yeah, paint, course. you know, like red, um, uh, you know, what was the word? Uh, lightning bolt, as it were, across yeah, the face. Right. And back combed my hair and sprayed it gold. Yep. And I, that's how I went to school on the last day. So. I mean, it wasn't much of a rebellion, but that was sort of. That's my, a pretty good rebellion. That's my, that's my way of. Yeah, absolutely. Out, at least. Yeah. yeah. So, what's your your if you went as Ziggy Stardust, mm -hmm. your favorite David Bowie? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But what's your favorite David Bowie album or oh, song? Oh, famous favorite album. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it probably is. I mean, favorite song is "Only Spiders from Mars." And, yeah, yeah, "Spiders yeah. from Mars." Yeah, that's a I'd good say. one. Yeah. Um, although I say, I mean. I had all this amazing collection. It was all pretty much all on vinyl. Shows how old I am, uh, or how young I am, I guess. It has a it has a very warm it tone. All, it all comes so, around. Yeah. Um, but I had some, you know, some amazing sort of old, you know, rare Japanese prints and mm. stuff, and all sorts of weird and wacky stuff. Yeah. Um, and then when I, when I left home, my parents threw it all out. Would they have been worth some money now, no, right? Probably, yeah. yeah, they, did, they yeah. didn't realize right. sort of what they were doing. But, yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Forgive them for they know not what they do. Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I remember I once wrote a, 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 an eschatology paper that's the study of the end times and systematic theology on five years, oh, the yeah. song mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. kicks off that album. Yeah. And that was, a, yeah, it's an interesting kind of end of the world yeah. kind of yeah. thing, the end of the yeah. world song. Great. So remember, you still have skip, okay. and you still yep. have flip. Oh yeah. So we have done two cards, two rounds of the memories, and you have won. You are in the lead by many, many points. So this, this is good. I kind of like this idea of sort of awarding points at random. Well, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. 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 All right. So this is insights now. Okay. One, two, or three. I guess I'll go for three. So All right. Yeah. Insights. What is proof that someone really knows you? Hmm. Okay. Give me some time to think. I'm going to flip that one to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I was afraid of that. Yeah. What's proof that someone really knows Aaron? Um, I would have to say you, when you know what someone is like when they get tired and you know the signs that they're getting tired, uh, cranky, anxious, you know, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, I, I tend to want to be well-rested well around all of y'all, so uh, that would be a sign that someone knows who I really am is if they've seen, you know, if they've seen someone at their worst. Uh, so when, if someone knows, uh, and getting tired, uh, that, that would definitely be a sign that they really know me. Have you given some thought to this now? I do, and it's okay. actually similar. My, my partner, Helen, definitely knows me well, and she knows that when I kind of flip out, which I do occasionally, if she just leaves me alone for probably about uh, yeah, half an hour, an hour, two on a really bad time, uh, I will I will calm down mm. because I do and yeah I'm, I can be mercurial but it's sort of it, it's it's a bit like hydrogen it can go <laughs> then it's gone uh, so it's yeah so Helen knows me very well and knows to know that yeah kind of the same sort of thing just this is when these are, this is going to happen and mm. just to let it play itself out because it will. So I'm wondering if we have a little bit more time for the insight question. Okay. So yep. we just have two this time because this is all improv and everything yeah. is made up. So uh, one or two. It's very binary. I'll go with um, two. Two. What have you learned to take less seriously? <laughs> Myself, obviously. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's the obvious answer to that question. Or this should be. Um, also the world as well. I mean, I'm realizing the world, I mean, one of the advantages of growing up in Ireland was there's this idea of uh, people not taking themselves seriously is a very important like cultural thing in mm. Irish uh, culture. That this idea of, you know, and copping on is the term that's used in Ireland, which means to copping sort of, on. to cop on means to, and have to have cop on, mm. uh, is to sort of realize what's really important and what's really going on. Yeah. And it can be just like understanding how things are going, but it's also very much not taking yourself seriously and just uh, and letting things go. Because in Ireland, this, and this is actually, go back to the further per, previous question, to, the way that you know somebody really knows you and loves you uh, is to slag you. Mm. In, in, our, in Ireland, slagging somebody is, you know, it's, it's ribbing them, it's sort of, ah. uh, uh, it's like a roast but in a sort of a private way. Uh, and, and, <laughs> a and, private and, and, roast. And if you it's know great. somebody really well, or you know they know you really well, you'll slag one another, because it's, it's this whole dive, for God's sake, don't take yourself so seriously. Mm. Don't take whatever's going on in life too seriously. Yeah. And certainly, you know, who, you know, who do you think you are in a, in a nice way? Right, yeah. yeah. That's what it's yeah. about. Yeah. So knowing what I know about yeah. global Unitarian Universalism, I'm aware that there is not a big presence in Ireland. Am I accurate in that? Uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, there are a couple of Unitarian churches, and they are Unitarian rather than Unitarian right. Universalist. Although, actually, uh, they use the Grey Hymnal oh, okay. uh, in the Dublin Unitarian Church. It's a beautiful church, by the way, sort of 19th century. Um, there have been Unitarians in Ireland since the 17th century. Right. Uh, one of them came over with Oliver Cromwell, who was not particularly well liked in Ireland. Um, <laughs> but uh, but, but the, the Unitarians were sort of, you know, uh, in that Puritan tradition. Um, so they, yeah, so, so uh, the, the, there have been Unitarians. And in fact, there was a Unitarian minister who was imprisoned uh -huh. for two years for preaching Unitarianism. Uh, so it's dangerous. Um, uh, because, yeah, because it wasn't until, I think it was about 18... 20 about then yeah. that Unitarianism became legal wow. in, okay. uh, in Britain and Ireland. So how did you become Unitarian Universalist? Because I'm guessing you were not raised in that tradition. No, no. What no, was no. your journey yeah, yeah. to this? I, was, I mean, I was raised, um, I was on church, basically. My, my mother's side of the family has all been uh, all atheist. Uh, my dad, well, my father was raised Christian scientist, but became, a, but became an, an agnostic. Uh, and so I was basically raised unchurched, 
Although in Ireland there's this thing, you know, you, 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 because of Ireland, the way Ireland is, um, you, you can be an atheist, but you either have to be a Catholic atheist or a Protestant atheist. <laughs> <laughs> So essentially, I was a Protestant atheist. I went to an okay. Anglican you know, Episcopal school, and the youth group there was sort of affiliated with the church. So I was sort of in that yeah. mix. Um, but no, it wasn't until I came, um, you know, came over here, and uh, my, my my wife at the time and I would I just had our uh, girls, and you know the other joke: the Unitarians are Unitarian Universalists are atheists who have kids, right? Mm. Uh, <laughs> So we decided we should need, we needed to find a place. I don't actually agree with that, but uh, but we need to find he a place uh, to, to, to have yes. uh, some you know a spiritual home for for the kids because we thought that was really important. And uh, we went to Mainline Unitarian um, and yeah, fell in love with the place. And uh, yeah. great, great. And it was about twenty odd years ago. Twenty odd years ago. Very good. All right. We have three questions for this final round. Three cards. One this is for all the marbles. Uh, it's for all of the marbles, okay. but you're also you need 500 points to win. But you're also the only person playing, so you're you're doing all right. Doing Hopefully all right. the judges will be kind. Yes, yeah. they are. They are a wonderful <laughs> congregation. One, two, or three. Two. Two. Oh, this is a good one. <laughs> they are all good questions. They're all good questions. They're all good questions. They're all good dogs. Um, ha where have you experienced awe? Ah. <laughs> um, Lankenau Hospital in Pennsylvania. Uh, uh, um, and that was the birth of my daughters. Mm -hmm. it, Particularly, I mean, India is uh, India and Lizzie, my daughters, uh, 25 and 22 now. But when India was born, um, I forget the technical term, but she was born what's called like sunny side up. So instead of being head down, her, her face was up, as it were, um, uh, which was amazing because then the the, uh, 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 the the room filled with all of these medical students yeah. who had never seen this and they were called in to see this experience. But for me, it was just this incredible moment of awe because her face came up and mm. I looked directly into yeah. her face and it was like, <sighs> mm. yeah, I'm that, I mean, that, that moment becoming a father, uh, but seeing her face like that yeah. was just amazing. Um, uh, didn't happen quite the same way with Lizzie, but it was equally or inspiring yeah. um, but, it, but that first time was and, right. and the fact she was sunny side up was <laughs> all definite all wonderful well terry you have won the game <laughs> well done well done dean thank you so your grand prize oh wow okay this is the grand prize you get a trip in our memory time machine to revisit one moment from your past. It's a moment that you would not change, but that you want to just stretch out a little bit longer just to spend a little bit more time there. What moment would you choose? Well, um... My father passed away this, this summer, yeah. a couple of months ago. What was your dad's name? Victor. Victor. Victor Frederick Dixon. Uh, he was a professor of Spanish uh, mm. at, Tr at Trinity College, Dublin. Um, 17th century Spanish drama in particular was you know, his, his field. Um, but his great love was opera. Mm. And um, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't realize that, I assumed all dads sang opera around the house. I thought that's just what dads yeah, did. Of yeah, of course. Uh, right. yeah. Uh, uh, but he used to, yeah, he used to go all around the house singing opera, uh, and uh, particularly he loved the um, Zalbefurter, the magic flute, and mm. uh, particularly because um, he was a baritone, the Papageno role, and so he would, uh, uh, he would sing this all around the house, and it wasn't actually, I mean, so growing up we had this, and then I just remember 
if I could go back and just hear him sing again, mm. that would be the, the thing I'd like to hear. Yeah. yeah. It's beautiful. Speaking of singing, we have sung two hymns, or we will sing two hymns, that you selected. Yes. Can you tell us why you picked these hymns? They're good, good chestnut hymns oh, yeah. that we oh, like that, to that's sing. That's part of it. First of all, it's always good to pick something people can sing, yeah, right? That's absolutely. always a good choice. <laughs> but no, they, they, they speak particularly to me. And the first one, particularly, the, uh, which is some, the St. Patrick's Breastplate, that, mm. uh, that tune, which is very Irish, of course, sort of always speaks to me, that one. Yeah. So. So the, and the, the, the slain tune is, is a yeah. great, great tune. Yeah. Um, and the second one, the, as soon as we're done, we will rise in body or spirit to sing, uh, we'll build the land. What, what's good about that hymn? That one just, I mean, the, the lyrics really speak to me. Yeah. I mean, I love the, the, that. And the, I mean, first of all, it's a rousing song, uh, hymn, but it's also, that is, I think, what we are supposed to be about. Mm -hmm. uh, that, the, that concept of building the land and, you know, justice and everything else that's to me what's what we should be doing wonderful yeah. great well terry thank you for playing uh this game with us okay. and as a way to introduce you to our congregation um it's better than the sermon where you want to just share everything that you know in that first sermon and then you have like 16 others to share so i i hope this was enjoyable thank Absolutely. you for yeah. for being game for for playing this with us again terry will be here for the next two years we're sharing him uh with the uh you use of wellesley hills um so uh thank you and thank you for being willing to be a teaching congregation again we are looking Appreciate for two new two additional members of his uh, internship committee. So if you want to hear more from Terry and really support him in his ministerial formation, uh, there is opportunity for you to do that. Come speak with me if that sounds like something you're interested in. It's a monthly commitment and getting to know uh, three other members of the uh, UU Wellesley congregation as well. So. Um, let us now rise in body or spirit. Both of those work just fine to sing our closing hymn number 121.
extinguishing our chalice, I leave you with these final thoughts. <laughs> Whatever works. As we depart this sacred space, may we create sacred spaces wherever we go. May we extend and share the love we feel inside these walls out into the wider world. And in so doing, may the quality and purpose of our lived lives be our living benediction. Our sacred service has ended, so let our sacred service begin. Be at peace and be about peace. Amen. <laughs>